Hello everyone. Now we will apply the basic concepts of electrical machines that we already learned in electrical machines 1 and electrical machines 2 to solve numerical questions of end semester examination of summer 2019. Let us begin with the first question that is question 1b of end semester examination summer 2019 which is for 6 marks. The question is a 36 slot, 6 pole, 3 phase, 50 hertz alternator has winding with coil span of 5 slots with 2 conductor per slot. Calculate pitch factor and distribution factor. So first we will see the given data. Right? As per the question, the number of slots are 36. The number of poles noted by P is 6. Then frequency 50 hertz. Then coil span is 5 slot, right? Now what is by coil span? Coil span is the distance between the two coil sides of a complete coil of a winding, right? And here the number of slots are 36 and number of poles are 6. So the number of slots per pole is 36 divided by 6 is 6, right? So here we can say that for full pitch there are the 6 slots per pole. But the coil span given is of 5 slots, right? So here we can say that the coil span is reduced by 1 slot or the coil span is shorted by 1 slot or we can say that the coil is short pitched, right? And the conductors per slot given is 2. Now what we have to find here? Pitch factor and distribution factor. Now we will see the equations to be used. So the first equation is pitch factor that is denoted by Kp. It is also known as coil span factor. Right? And the uh, equation is cos of alpha by 2. Then distribution factor denoted by Kd equal to sin of m beta by 2 divided by m sin beta by 2. Now here small n is used to indicate the number of slots per pole and that is 36 divided by 6 is 6. m is the number of slots per pole per phase. Right? How many number of slots? 36. Number of poles 6 and number of phases 3. So, the number of slots per pole per phase is equal to 2. Therefore, if the coil span is reduced by one slot, the phase angle alpha between the induced EMFs in the two sides of the coil is given as alpha is equal to 180 degree divided by n. What is 180 degree? 180 degree is the angle between the two sides of a coil of a winding right and that is for full pitch coil so the alpha means the whatever the angle it's there for short pitch winding short pitch coil that we have to find out that is equals to 180 degree divided by n n is what number of slots per pole so 180 degree divided by 6 is equals to 30 degree right and to find out the distribution factor that is beta is used and that is nothing but the angular displacement between the slots. So here in this question alpha and beta is same. So to understand the concept of short pitched coil let us refer this figure. So here, here in this figure 1, 2, 3 to 7 indicates the number of slots where the coil sides are placed. 180 degree pole pitch. So 180 degree pole pitch indicates the angular distance between the centers of adjacent poles. And if the pole pitch is equals to coil pitch, then that coil is known as full pitched coil. So here in this question, for full pitched coil, the coil span is of 6 slots. Because number of slots are 36 and number of poles are 6, right? So, the number of slots per pole is 6. 
so for a full pitch coil the number of slots is 6 means the coil span is of 6 slots but in the question the coil is short pitched by one slot right so the coil span is of 5 slots and that's why we can say that the given winding or the given coil is short pitched right so the angular displacement between the two coil sides of a coil which is short pitched by an angle of 30 degree is the 180 degree minus 30 degree right so here we can say that uh, the coil is short pitched by one slot and the angular displacement is of 180 degree minus 30 degree right got this so here this coil indicates that it is a short pitched coil now we'll uh, calculate the pitch factor and distribution factor so now put the value of alpha then we will get the pitch factor that is equals to cos of 15 degree right and that is 0.9659 is the answer then the distribution factor then put the value of m beta in the equation then we will get the distribution factor as 0.9659 which is the answer now uh, let us see the next question question 2a of the same end semester examination of summer 2019 which is for 6 marks the question is a 2000 kva three phase eight pole alternator runs at 750 rpm in parallel with other machine on 600 volt bus bars find synchronizing power on full load 0.8 power factor lagging per mechanical degree of displacement and corresponding synchronizing torque the synchronous reactance is 6 ohm per feet so as per the question write down the given data so the kva rating is of 2000 then number of poles p equal to 8 then alternator runs at 750 rpm line voltage is of 600 volts and the power factor is pointed lagging now what we have to find we have to find synchronizing power and synchronizing torque now here the equations to be used are if the line voltage is given then we know that as per the three phase circuits three phase ac circuits the phase voltage can be calculated by the ratio of line voltage to root 3 right then the kv rating that is apparent power is equals to for three phase circuit root 3 vl il then the full load current can be calculated by using the equation i is equals to rated kva multiplied by 1000 divided by root 3 vl right that is as per the equation 2 so here take out the il and then q divided by root 3 vl is the full load current then electrical angle is equals to number of poles divided by 2 multiplied by mechanical angle then induced emf e is equals to d plus j i axis total synchronizing power for three phases that is equals to 3 delta ev by axis synchronizing torque psy is equals to 3 multiplied by synchronizing power divided by 2 pi ns and to get that ns in rps divided by 60 now the phase uh, we will put the values and we'll calculate the phase voltage so 
fridge voltage is 600 by root 3 is 346.41 similarly find out the full load current KV rating is of 2000 right and it is in KV so get it in whole time here so multiply it by 1000 then divide by root 3 into 600 right then uh, displacement in electrical degrees that is theta is equals to P by 2 theta m so put the value of number of poles that is 8 divided by 2 multiplied by mechanical angle that is pi divided by 180 degree right so get it in radians so in this TMF is equals to then put the values of voltage right I access and get the in this TMF in rectangular form then again convert it to from rectangular to polar form with the magnitude at angle now again put the values here in synchronizing power and synchronizing torque and get the answer so the synchronizing power is 87.983 kilowatt and the synchronizing torque is 1120.23 newton meter next question is question 2a which is also for 6 marks the question is an 11 kilovolt 3 phase star connected synchronous generator delivers 4000 kVA at unity power factor when running on constant voltage, constant frequency bus bar. If the excitation is raised by 20%, determine kVA and power factor at which machine now works. The steam supply is constant and the synchronous reactance is 30 ohm per phase. Neglect power losses and assume magnetic circuit to be unsaturated. So here as per this question we have to assume the excitation is raised by 20% and according to that we have to determine the KVA rating and then power factor of the machine at new KVA. Right? Okay. So first write down the given data. So as per the question the Applied voltage is uh, that is line voltage is 11,000 volts. Then uh, KVA rating is 4000 KVA. When before the excitation is raised by 20%, and that is for unity power factor. Then uh, synchronous reactance 30 ohm per phase. What we have to determine here? We have to determine the KVA when the excitation is raised by 20 percentage and the power factor now continue to this equations to be used so the voltage per phase as we have already seen it is equals to VL by root 3 then reactance drop product of current and synchronous reactants then generated EMF per phase is equals to square root of square of the phase voltage plus the drop that is uh, the product of is and the square of that then the kv rating is given by the product of rms values of voltage and current Therefore, phase voltage well, is calculated by putting the value of line voltage that is 11,000 volt. So the answer is 6350 volt, the phase voltage. Then KV rating. KV rating is given of 4000 KVA. Then put the value of calculated phase voltage here. Then the As per the equation of KV is equals to VI, we can calculate the current and that is the 
current due to the resistance that is IR is equals to 630 ampere then reactance drop take the product of current and synchronous reactance per phase so the current is 630 reactance is 30 then the generated EMF per phase put the value of phase voltage and the drop that is I axis so the answer is generated EMF per phase is 11 sorry 19938 first we will draw the phase diagram with the values before the excitation that is with V as a reference and then with the values after the excitation that is I X excess drop also before the excitation take V as a reference and draw it parallel to the horizontal axis then show the vector I lagging band is V by an angle phi then show the in phase component IR in phase with the voltage V Right. then show the vector for the drop IR axis at 90 degree to the applied voltage V then the induced EMF is equals to what it is the vector sum of V and IR axis drop so E is equals to the square root of V square plus IR axis whole square that we already calculated then if the excitation is raised by 20 percentage then the active component of current that is I cos phi and that is indicated by IR here it will remain same but the reactive component of current and due to that the drop I x excess drop will be different and due to that the induced EMF will be different right so here the E dash if the excitation is raised by 20 percentage is equals to the square root of V plus IX excess whole square plus IR excess whole square. We will see that on the next slide. So here if the excitation is raised by 20 percentage then the generated EMF per phase is equal to 1.2 multiplied by the induced EMF before the excitation and that excitation is uh, that induced EMF is 19938 so now the excitation is raised by 20 percentage so multiplied by 1.2 right so we will get the generated EMF per phase then as per the phase diagram E dash square is equal to V plus IX excess whole square plus IR excess whole square so using this equation we can determine the value of reactive component of the current that is Ix right then the, using this Ix we can find out the new value of armature current and that is what square root of in phase component of the current the square of that plus the square of reactive component of the current so I is equals to the square root of 630 square plus 7738.611 square right now here are 630 is the in phase or active component of the current and 7738.611 is the reactive component of the current and that is ix right so using ir and ix here the new value of armature current is determined then using that we can find out the power factor because we know that in phase component of current is equals to I cos phi so IR is equals to I cos phi we can take here so IR is what 630 ampere that is calculated value and that's why the power factor can be calculated as IR by I right so IR is what 630 ampere and I is 7764.212 ampere so take the ratio of this then we will get the power factor and that is 0 0.08 and this is the inductive circuit so we can say that the power factor is the lagging power factor now finally we can determine the new value of kva so take the product of voltage 
and new value of armature current right so finally we'll get the kva but that is in mva so that is the answer now the next question is question 3b which is also for 6 marks the question is a three phase 10 kw synchronous motor is connected to 1000 volt supply and has synchronous reactance of 10 ohm per phase find the value of minimum current and the corresponding induced emf for full load condition the efficiency of the motor is 80 percentage neglect armature resistance first as usual we'll see the given data so here the motor output is given that is 10 kw then supply line voltage is 1000 volt then synchronous impedance as armature resistance is neglected and that is equals to the synchronous reactance per phase and that is 10 ohm then efficiency of the motor is given that is 80 percentage now what we have to find we have to find out the minimum current then Now this is the equations to be used. First efficiency, we know that efficiency is motor output power divided by motor input power. Then motor input power is equals to for three phase system with the line values is root three V L I L cos phi. Then impedance drop we have already seen it right in the previous question. That is the product of I Z. Here the armature resistance is negligible. That's why the impedance drop is equals to the product of current and synchronous reactance. Then phase voltage, that is voltage per phase, is equals to V L by root three. Then induced EMF per phase, that we already seen, is equals to the vector sum of phase voltage and impedance drop. So E P H is equals to the square root of V P H square plus I Z square. Line induced EMF, as uh, seen earlier, for V P H, so it is equals to root three E P H, because we know that in three phase AC circuits, line voltage is equals to root three times the phase voltage. We have the given data and we know the equations to be used. So by putting the values. in the equation we can find out the answer right so first we will calculate the values and then we will see the phase diagram motor input power is the ratio of motor output power to the efficiency so put the value of output power and efficiency then we will get the motor input power Similarly, to find out the in phase or active component of the current, take out the I cos phi from the equation root three V L I L cos phi, and uh, put the value of motor input power here, that is of twelve thousand five hundred watts, right, and divide it by root three V L, so we will get the I cos phi as seven point two one six amperes, and this is the current, and this current is minimum when power factor is unity. So with this uh, unity power factor, we can say that this I is equals to I cos phi. Then uh, using this current, we can find out the impedance drop. So put the value of this uh, minimum value of current and uh, the synchronous reactance per phase. So that is the product of 7.216 and 10. So the impedance drop is 72.16 volts. Now this is the phase diagram. The phase voltage is calculated by taking the ratio of V L to the root three, right? So phase voltage is 577.35 volts. So that is taken as a reference. Then uh, show the impedance drop. That is I Z is equals to 72.16 volts at 90 degree to this. Why? Because the armature resistance is neglected here 
right that's why the impedance drop can be shown at 90 degree to the voltage and then the vector sum is what EPH right then we can show the current that is minimum current I in phase with the voltage that is VPH now you see the induced TMF per phase which is the resultant of phase voltage and impedance drop so first we will find out the phase voltage then induced TMF by taking the vector sum of phase voltage and impedance drop that is equal to square root of VPH square plus IZ square then using that we can find out the line in this TMF that is root 3 times the phase voltage so put the value of uh, calculated uh, EPH and get the line in this TMF and that is the answer this is the next question question 3b which is in all and which is also for 6 marks the question is a 3000 hold 3 phase synchronous motor running at 1500 rpm has its excitation kept constant corresponding to no load terminal voltage of 3000 volt determine the power input power factor and torque developed for an armature current of 250 ampere if the synchronous reactance is 5 ohm per phase right then we have to determine what power input power factor and torque developed and we have to neglect here armature resistance now we will see the given data so as per the question the line voltage is 3000 volt synchronous speed 1500 rpm then synchronous impedance is equal to the synchronous reactance per phase and that is phi ohm and it is why because armature resistance is negligible what we have to find here we have to determine the power input power factor and torque developed for an armature current of 250 amperes now I'll see the equations to be used torque developed that is equals to the ratio of motor input power minus armature copper loss divided by 2 pi ns divided by 60 so here we are taking the synchronous speed in rps that's why divide the synchronous speed by 60 then motor input power that is equals to root 3 vl il cos phi then impedance drop equal to iz and that is equals to ixs because here armature resistance is neglected that's why the impedance is equal to the synchronous reactance then phase voltage that is equal to VL by root 3 then power factor that is cos phi and then line induced EMF equal to root 3 times the phase EMF so put the values and get the answer so the phase voltage is 3000 divided by root 3 then we will get 1732.051 volts then get the induced EMF per phase equal to 3000 divided by root 3 here the induced EMF per phase is calculated by taking the value of line voltage that is equal to 3000 volt why because the excitation is kept constant and there is no load on the motor that's why the induced TMF and the terminal voltage both are same that's why here again we have taken 3000 volt as the line induced TMF and that's why the induced TMF per phase is equal to 3000 by root 3 and that is same as the phase voltage input line current is equal to the input phase current 
is equals to 250 amperes because we know that in star connection the line current and the phase current are same then impedance drop you put the value of 250 ampere current and uh, synchronous reactors that is 5 ohm we will get the impedance drop that is 1250 volts then internal angle we can take it as 90 degree y because the armature resistance is negligible so according to that we can draw the phasor diagram So, assuming armature current lagging behind the supply voltage band angle phi, so as shown in figure, that is phasor diagram. So, take V as a reference, then show the current lagging behind V band angle phi, right? then show the vector that is impedance drop ER at 90 degree to the current vector, and then the resultant is E, right. So according to the phasor diagram in triangle AOB, we can get the equation E square is equal to V square plus ER square minus 2 VER cos of 90 degree minus phi. So here put the values and we can get angle phi right so first we will get the sine phi and then take the sine inverse of that so the angle phi is equals to 21.15 degree then using that we can determine the power factor that is cos of phi and that is 0 0.9326 lag it so this is the answer Next, motor input power is equal to root 3 VL IL cos phi. So just put the values. Then we will get the motor input power as 1 to 1 to kilowatt. Then torque developed. Now the motor input power is calculated. Armature copper loss is neglected here. Right? So just put the input power and synchronous speed and get the torque developed in Newton meter so that is the answer now let us see the next question question 4a which is for 5 marks the question is determine the sleep at maximum torque and ratio of maximum 2 full load torque for a 3 phase star connected 6.6 .6 kilo volt 20 pole 50 hertz induction motor its rotor resistance is 0.12 ohm and standstill reactance is 1.12 ohm per phase the motor runs at 292.5 rpm at full load so what we have to determine here sleep at maximum torque and ratio of maximum to full load torque so first we will see the given data so as per the question, the line voltage is 6.6 .6 kilo volt, number of poles 20, then rotor resistance, that's why R2, it is about rotor resistance, okay, that's why it is indicated as R2, and it is 0.12 ohm per phase, then standstill reactance, that is x2 is equal to 1.12 ohm per phase then full load speed is 292.5 rpm and we have to determine here sleep at maximum torque and ratio of maximum to full load torque so the synchronous speed we know that what is the equation and s is equals to 120 f by p so put the value of f and p and uh, synchronous speed is what then 300 rpm then full load sleep is calculated by 
the ratio of ns minus nf to ns what is ns ns is the synchronous speed so put it as 300 rpm then full load speed is given as 292.5 so take the ratio of that then the full load slip is 0.025 then with this we can find out the slip corresponding to maximum torque so s max is equals to the ratio of r2 by x2 and that is 0 0.101 107 and that is the answer for slip corresponding to maximum torque then we have to find out the ratio of maximum to full load torque so put the maximum slip and full load slip then we can have a ratio of maximum to full load torque that is 2.256 this is the answer the next question is question 4a which is in or and it is also for 6 marks the question is the rotor resistance and reactance per phase of a 415 volt 4 pole 50 hertz three phase induction motor is 0.03 0.024 ohm and 0.12 ohm respectively find the speed at maximum torque also find maximum torque in newton meter consider ratio of stator turns to rotor turns as 1 so first see the given data voltage is 415 volts number of poles 4 rotor resistance 0.024 ohm per phase as it is a three phase induction motor and we know that in three phase induction motor there are two constructional parts rotor and stator so the rotor parameters are indicated by the suffix 2 that's why r2 here indicates rotor resistance and x2 indicates rotor reactance and both are in both are per phase value because this is a three phase induction motor then what we have to determine here speed at maximum torque and maximum torque first find out the synchronous speed by using the equation 120f by p so put the value of frequency and number of poles So we'll get the synchronous speed as 1500 rpm. Then slip corresponding to maximum torque by taking the ratio of R2 and X2, and it is 0.2. Then speed at maximum torque. So put the value of slip corresponding to maximum torque in the equation NS in bracket 1 minus S. So instead of in place of S, put here S max. So we will get the speed at maximum torque, and that is 1200 rpm. As the, in question, it is given that the ratio of rotor turns to the stator turns is one. So using that, we can calculate the rotor induced EMF equal to K E one. So that's why it is equal to. 1 multiplied by 415 by root 3. Stator EMF is given that is 415 and it is the line voltage. So get convert it into phase voltage and that is 415 by root 3. Turns ratio is 1. That's why the rotor induced EMF per phase is 240 volts. Then. By using the equation K dash E2 square divided by Toys X2, we can find out the maximum torque. So put the value of K dash as 3 by 2 pi and S divided by 60, and then E2 and X2, we will get the maximum torque, and that is 4 pi 4560 newton meter, and this is the answer. Now the next question is question five, which is for ten marks, and that is of circle diagram. 
So the question is a 5 kilowatt 400 volts 4 pole 50 hertz delta connected motor give the following results and it is assumed that the stator resistance is 1.6 per 1.6 ohm per phase. Now the data by no load test is voltage 400 volts, current 3.1 and power is 350 watts. The data by block rotor test it is voltage is 52 volts, current 7.6 ampere and power is 440 volts. Sorry, 440 watts. What we have to do here? We have to draw a circle diagram to the scale and we have to determine the full load efficiency. So let us see the given data first. So as per the no load test, no load voltage is 400 volts, no load current is 3.1 ampere and no load power is 350 watts. So using that we can find out the no load power factor and that is equals to P0 by root 3 V0 I0. So no load power is given that is 350, then no load voltage is 400 and no load current is 3.1. So put that values, so we will get the power factor that is no load power factor as 0.163. Then using that find out the no load phase angle. So take the cos inverse of 0.163. So the no load phase angle is 80.62 degree. Now short circuit current with normal voltage applied across the stator can be calculated as ISC is equals to the short circuit current uh, 7.6 multiplied by no load voltage to the short circuit voltage that is 400 by 52 and that is the current that is short circuit current with normal voltage and it is 58.46 amperes right so using that we can find out the short circuit input with normal voltage that is PSC and that is equals to 58.46 divided by 7.6 whole square multiplied by 440 right what is here 58.46 it is the short circuit current with normal voltage and what is 7.6 it is the current that we take it from the short circuit test readings right then short circuit power factor cos phi sc is equals to psc by root 3 v naught isc so just put the values and give the short circuit power factor as 0.64 then short circuit phase angle take the cos inverse of 0.64 then we get the short circuit phase angle as 50.20 degree here the values are not as per the given data so that may be due to some inaccurate values in questions now short circuit current with normal voltage applied across the stator Okay, that we have seen so now we have to decide the current scale and that is 1 centimeter is equals to 5 ampere so here we are taking 1 centimeter is equals to 5 ampere by using the results obtained from no load and block rotor twist on three phase induction motor we have calculated the no load phase angle phi naught and short circuit phase angle phi sc which are used here to draw the circle diagram so with O as origin take OV along the Y axis then with O as origin draw OO dash that is equal to no load current at an angle phi naught to V that is it is lagging behind V by an angle phi naught then with O as origin draw OA that is equals to the short circuit current with normal voltage and that is to be drawn at an angle phi SC 
to V. Then draw OF perpendicular to OV. Then from O dash draw a line O dash G parallel to OF. Then to get the center of the required circle draw a perpendicular to the line O dash G O dash A. First jo join the line O dash A and then take a perpendicular to line O dash A that will bisect the line at point B and then it will intersect the line O dash G at C. So with C as the center and O dash C as the radius we can draw the semicircle and that is shown on the next slide. So here with C as the center and O dash C as the radius we have drawn a semicircle. Then at an angle phi 1 draw or join OH. So to get the point H draw a line parallel to O dash A that is output line that also represents the rotor current referred to the primary side that is I1 dash. Right so OH will indicate the current I1 and that is at an angle phi 1 to V. Then to estimate the maximum output power, maximum torque and maximum input power, draw the intercepts to the circle diagram. So here first draw the points O dash D. So O dash D line indicates the torque line. Then the O dash A is already joined and the O dash A indicates the output line. Right. So to get the maximum output power drop perpendicular from point H and then that will cut the lines O dash A, O dash D and O dash C at the points K, L, M. Right. So the H, K that is the intercept, vertical intercept H, K indicates the maximum output power. Now to estimate the maximum torque draw line parallel to the torque line then that will in, uh, intersect the semicircle at O dash that is it will be tangent to the semicircle and then O dash O will indicate the maximum torque right then to get the maximum input power drop a perpendicular from point A and means what uh, how to get the point A draw a line parallel to the O dash Z or O F then that will be tangent to the se semicircle right that will cut the semicircle at point A then the vertical intercept A F will indicate the maximum input power right also it will indicate the total losses E F indicates the no load losses that is fixed losses then AD rotor copper loss and DE stator copper loss right so the po points HK then HL HM and HN so these are the energy component point energy components of the line current I1 and that we will see how these are used to calculate the sleep power factor and efficiency at full load. So to determine power scale a perpendicular AF through A is drawn that we have already seen. So AF represents the total input on short circuit with normal voltage with its 2634.132 watts. Since AF is equals to 7.15 cm we can measure it by scale and it is 17.15 cm. So the power scale is what then? 2634.132 divided by 7.15 and that is 3641.137 watts per centimeter. So at full load we can calculate the power factor by taking the ratio of NH that is the energy component of the current I1 divided by OH. OH is what? 
that is the line current I1 at an angle phi1 right so by taking the ratio of that we get the power factor as 0.9 then output can be calculated by kh and multiplied by power scale so kh measure it in centimeter by scale so it is 2.15 centimeter and multiplied by power scale then we will get the output in watts then find out the efficiency by taking the ratio of kh to nh and multiply it by 100 so we will get the efficiency and the ratio of that kh by nh is uh, 2.15 divided by 4.61 is 0.466 multiplied by 100 then we will get the efficiency that is 46.6 percentage and that is the answer so i think all the questions are clear to you and if you are having any doubts any confusion then you can contact me you can call me right thank you